So day three of the Gandel uh, trip and the second day of the Advashem program. And today was largely with multiple lectures looking at different aspects uh, of the Holocaust. We started by asking the question, who were the Jews in Poland? I learned quite a few things uh, today that really challenged the preconceptions I'd have of, of the Jews. For example, uh, the Jewish population in Germany was less than 1%. And because they were so concentrated in, in different uh, regions, like a third of that 500,000 Jews was in Berlin itself, another third was sprinkled through a couple of other major cities, um, which meant for most German people, they had actually never met a Jew before, nor would they. And that kind of struck home, because often when we teach the Holocaust, we talk and we start by looking at Jews in Germany who were who are such a kind of um, a minority in that country, as opposed to Poland next door. Uh, Poland had three and a half million Jews, uh, and they made up 10% of the population. So a sizable uh, minority within Poland was, was uh, Jewish. And so starting in Poland, one of the things that uh, Yad Vashem advocates is, is thinking about life pre-war, and, uh, and in Poland, so, so we had a lecture on who were Polish Jews, uh, looking at a whole range of different uh, Jewish groups within Poland, uh, looking at their politics, uh, the different groups of Zionists, uh, be it um, uh, Zionist socialists, uh, led by Ben Gurion, uh, looking at um, uh, religious uh, Zionists as well, or, or religious people, uh, groups who are anti-Zionist, as well as general Zionists um, and Bundes, who were socialists uh, and not Zionists, um, nor religious. So a very uh, complicated um, mix of, of Jews um, within Poland. And I guess it really just rammed home this idea that um, the that the, the jury in Poland were complicated. They, they had very different political ideas. Um, those people that belonged to these different parties kind of went all in. So they educated their children at schools led by the Zionist socialist groups or by the uh, Bundes. And so uh, really it wasn't uh, you know, so much like Australians would be Oh, let's just you know vote for this party. It was you're all in with that party. Your children were educated at a school and they learnt Hebrew at that school. And other Jews who disagreed with this, they went to another school and they were taught using Yiddish, a completely different language. Uh, so that I found that quite interesting. This was followed by a, an educational unit uh, where we had a, a teacher um, come and show us how. Uh, we can we can use uh, imagery, and and how we can think about teaching um, pre-war um, Poland uh, and and the Jews within Poland, and that was really interesting. Thinking through different uh, pedagogical ways you can do this. Um, there were there were huge images lined up in the room, uh, and a collage of different images, and we talked about what what the stereotype we have in our in our mind of what a Jew was and where that often comes from, and why we have that, and, uh, and how that can be helpful and unhelpful, and thinking through um, the, yeah, the image that we have and where it comes from is a very helpful way of, of actually starting to try and unpack um, why that's the case. And that's the case not just for, um, for foreign people, for Australians thinking about Jewish people. Jewish people have an image of what a Jew looks like in their mind as well, which is interesting. Uh, that was followed up by a testimony that we watched, a video testimony of, um, of a woman who was friends with Anne um, Frank. And they lived in the same village in Holland uh, before Anne Frank went into hiding. Uh, and then they, they, she saw her just a few days before uh, Anne Frank died in, um, in, um, in Belsen. And... Uh, yeah, that, that was also quite interesting, thinking through uh, and hearing her perspective of the, their time in the Holocaust and survivors. Uh, this was followed up then uh, by a lecture uh, on literature, on 
um, the two kind of revolutions in literature circles. Um, and this really uh, was a yeah, fascinating look at the, the different ways that literature was used. So looking at the Hasidic revolution, and the uh, the second one um, does not spring to mind at the moment. Hesekath, I think it was. Um, I'll have a look at my notes and let you know later. But thinking through how literature changed, how Yiddish became used uh, in both of those um, literature kind of ways, uh, one of which the Hasidic one is, is using Yiddish language for uh, believers to worship in prayer and in song and in story. Um, whereas prior to this, uh, Hebrew was used and it was written and textual. And so those type of ways of worshipping just hadn't really occurred before. So that was quite a change. Uh, and the other, uh, Hesekath, I think it is, the other revolution was, was thinking through, um, and they were trying to say that w the Jews should assimilate with the modern countries that they were in at the time. Uh, so a completely different um, way of thinking there. Uh, then we then uh, kind of went for a walk around the grounds of Yad Vashem and looked at some of the memorials. Uh, we, we saw a, a carriage that had been used, one of the cattle cars um, that, that is set up in this really poignant way of um, kind of on a, a track that's kind of coming out into the, uh, into the sky uh, and that's sitting there uh, looking at the eternal flame. One thing that I found really interesting, they had a copy of a... Uh, statue, kind of mural, huge, um, I guess you'd call it a statue, the kind of metal um, uh, pictorial kind of images, I'm not sure what you'd call them, uh, but these were from the 40s and they showed something that that is no longer seen in, uh, in Jewish circles when they remember the Holocaust, but before now, from the, from the 40s, 50s, 60s, into the 70s, uh, there was this, this portrayal of just two groups there were those who resisted and they were seen as kind of uh, they were portrayed uh, in these statues as big greek warriors kind of they were the ones that stood up and fought and then there were the lambs to the slaughter people who didn't put up any resistance whatsoever and that that held for decades after the holocaust this idea and slowly uh, through survivors starting to tell their story through various um, uh, portrayals like Holocaust, Shoah, the movie, uh, and, uh, and Schindler's List, people started to see that there are more ways to resist. And this, the idea of resistance really kind of um, broadened, the definition broadened to uh, cultural resistance and spiritual resistance, not just fighting which was a tiny minority of, of, of Jews that did that. Uh, so that was quite interesting as well. We went, then went down to the Valley of Communities. And basically what, what Yad Vashem has done is, is dug into the, the mountain and created this, uh, this kind of amazing, you go into like almost a man-made gorge and on the wall are all the names of Jewish communities, the, the largest 5,500 Jewish communities uh, who kind of disappeared or were affected by the Holocaust. And so they've got some names there and they've got the names of the villages, not the countries, because sometimes the village stayed and the, you know, the, the village changed hands uh, three or four times with different empires taking over and countries, etc., etc. But the name of the village stayed the same. So that was as amazing, this huge kind of hewn out of the rock uh, they've used Jerusalem stone, huge slabs of Jerusalem stone, uh, and then kind of carved the names into it. Uh, so that was that was fascinating. Uh, so and then just headed back to the to the hotel. So all up, uh, a really enjoyable day. Lots to think about about how uh, we as educators um, come to the Holocaust with preconceptions. Lots of um, helpful uh, information given and and ideas given and examples given of how we can look at pre-war uh, Jewry in Poland. And I guess um, just a very helpful day um, to kind of think through some of the issues that we have when we teach the Holocaust. And that's what this course is gonna be doing time and time again. So hopefully that's been enlightening, a bit of a longer vlog uh, today, 
as I kind of explained some of the things that were that were happening, and this may happen as as time goes on, as I'm thinking more about some um, those kinds of things. So sorry about that. Uh, catch you tomorrow.